What up? You know it is a Don Tony Teflon. I'm back at you another one. And this one is, what was on that podcast that Harrison was listening to? I'm going to play it for you exactly. And when I do, it will leave you without a shadow of a doubt that Molly knows exactly who Dexter is. 100. What up to all my thugs, nerds, freaks, and geeks? You're now rocking with the best of Don Tony Teflon. If you can, please subscribe and click that bell so you can be notified every time I drop a new video. And as always, 500 is the light gold. If this video hits 500 views, then a person who's a subscriber who leaves a comment on this video, I will give away one free Dexter shirt. We had two winners. Bravo to you for getting me there. I truly appreciate it. I will announce one of the winners in this video and then another in the next video. So hopefully we get another video. And if we get that before that, I will announce two in the next video. So let's do it. Now, my other video, I gave you all the proof that you should have needed to know that Molly Park knows exactly who Dexter is. But there's still a couple of questions out there in people's minds. So we're going to go through some more evidence proving this point. First thing we're going to go through is the exact podcast that Harrison was listening to when he was sitting in the classroom. What was it? What was said on there? What did Molly say? So I'm going to play for you part of the podcast. And when I do play those parts, I will stop at some particular time and I will give you my breakdown analysis of what she just said. Now let's get right into it. Hi, hi, and welcome to Merry Fucking Kill. I'm Molly Park, and boy, do I have a doozy of an episode for you. Today, I'm gonna serialize the creepiest fuck and truly terrifying, also incorrectly monikered, Trinity Killer. Spoiler alert, he didn't kill in threes. He killed in fucking fours, and he's been doing this since, wait for it, 1979. This killer has lasted longer than disco, hair metal, and grunge combined. Watch out, Zodiac. And for all we know, he could still be out there teaching in the streets and slaying in the sheets and bathtubs today. Let's dig in on kill cycle number one, Lady in the Water. Trinity goes on the prowl, searching for young women, breaks into their house, and then slaughters them with the razor. You know, those creepy switchblade-like things that old school barbers and Highland Park hipsters trying to be retro use? I had a boyfriend who used one of those. He did a couple of episodes of Riverdale. I won't say his name. Slice the fuck out of himself just to be cool and shit. I considered calling him Nick instead. Me, I'm a Venus Razor girl. Works best to keep winter legs from giving my mother a heart attack. But back to Trinity, which is why we're all here. He'd crawl into the bathtub with this victim and slash into their thighs, leaving them soaking in a pool of their own plasma. Side note, I bet a bathtub of blood is actually great for your complexion. Move over Korean body scrubs, blood spas are the next best thing. So right off the bat, we hear how she knows that the Trinity killer doesn't just kill in threes, he kills in fours, right? Something that the police did not pick up on. And she also knows exactly the method that he kills with and the straight razor that he uses to do these kills. So when we look at Dexter and we see that his son has the exact same straight razor. He did the exact same cut to the kid that he framed for shooting up the school. It's not hard to tell that she's going to realize she's seen this before. Where did she see it before? Oh, with the Trinity Killer. She will put two and two together really fast and relay this message to Bishop, which is why she's especially dangerous to Dexter and his son. Let's continue. But I digress. What's totally messed up and completely misogynistic about these kills? For years on end, homicide cops would come to the scene of the crime, find these women laid out in their tub, sometimes left there for days on end, and call it suicide. Cause you know, women be crazy. Never mind that no female would choose to go out like this. I mean, slashing wrists is a thing. Thigh suicide is so not. Don't men know anything? We hate our thighs. So Trinity got away with this shit for years on end. So yeah, fuck you, Trinity. On to kill cycle number two. This one is real deal nightmare juice to all you mothers out there. Trinity would go trawling for MILFs. Well, not mothers I'd like to fuck. You know what? I hate that term. Let's nix that from the merry fucking kill vocab. Mothers of two, as in mothers with two kids. Breaking news alert part two. 
all mothers are not your goddamn mothers, you sick fuck serial killers. Seriously, I don't think I can say that enough. Jesus. So Trinity would stalk his prey, looking for mothers with an older daughter and younger boy, snatch them up, Buffalo Bill style, minus the Bundy blow to the head, bring them to the top of a tall building and fucking force them to jump. Can you imagine the sheer terror these poor women felt? What fucked up threats Trinity must have said to them to make these women jump on their own volition, masking his multiple kills once again as suicides? I mean, he had to have threatened to wipe out their kids in horrible ways, right? Next up, we hear her talk about how serial killers like to try to make it look like a suicide, how they would disguise their kills as suicide. First, the slash in the thigh. Cops thought that women were taking their own lives by slashing themselves in the thigh. Next, he would make family members or the women go up on roofs and jump off the building. So she's aware that serial killers do this and this is one of their M.O.'s of a serial killer, right? What did Dexter just do? Well, he made that guy look like a suicide by putting that stuff up his nose. I do believe it was fentanyl. He made him overdose on it. But how Dexter messed up is he has two people with syringe marks on their neck. One that is still alive. So if this M.E. is as good as we think he is, I'm sure that's going to be brought to light that, hey, somebody, these two people just happen to have syringe marks in their neck and Dexter was around, at least that they know of, one of them. Plus, if they do a toxicology report, it should show what was in that syringe. And if the other guy goes in and he does a blood analysis and they do a toxicology report on him, then it's just about over for Dexter. We finally get a reprieve from all this violence against women when Trinity would find some poor dad and bludgeon the shit out of him in the back alley of some bar. The beaten and battered dad would have bloody knuckles like he gave a hell of a fight before it was beatdown time. Investigators always give it up to being the usual drunken douchebag dust-up that happens after closing time in bars, which is why I never hang out in low-end dives. I see enough fistcuffs on my passenger shaming insta-feed. So all these horrific homicides have gone quietly under the radar as suicides and brawl gone wrong since 1979. 1979. Think about that. That's a lot of murdered mamas and papas that got zero justice. It would have continued in this invisible way if it weren't for FBI Special Agent Frank Lundy. In this section, we hear her say how the Trinity Killer would beat somebody up and it would just look like a back alley brawl. What did we just see Dexter do? He went out and made it look like a back alley brawl because he stabbed the guy in the neck and then the cops came and showed up. So then he had to make it look like it was some type of brawl and he was over there. Listen, There's a reason why they have this podcast and that she's saying these exact points. And that's what we exactly seen go down with Dexter. She is going to put all this together. And that's the bottom line. Let's continue. He's the one to put this pattern together. Following these kills all over the country. No real evidence. Just that intuition that all great investigators have. A feeling in his gut about how in the same city there would be a young woman who committed suicide by slashing her femoral artery in a bathtub followed by a mother of two leaping to her death and a fighting father who went down in the ninth outside of a dive bar in the wee hours of the morning. Some people think Lundy was a genius. I wish I could pick his brain. But, well, more on that later. Following a bathtub suicide and a mother leaping to her death, Lundy came to Miami, its own little hotbed of serial killing with that other titan of life-taking, the Bay Harbor Butcher. So now we hear her talk about the Bay Harbor Butcher and Miami. So we'll see if she goes into more details about the Bay Harbor Butcher. But it shows that she knows all about this case, the Bay Harbor Butcher. Let's continue. And also Frank Lundy. She knows about him. But let's continue on. It's there in Miami where Lundy really hit his stride, leading the investigation to the most mild-mannered neighborhood dad, Arthur Mitchell, you can imagine. I mean, this fucko would give Clark Kent a run for his money in the biz of being mild-mannered. Teacher by day, serial killer by night, father of two, and a loving wife, all of whom are still out there in the FBI Witness Protection Program. Why is that? We'll get to that later. Already also found to have an older daughter who was dallying with Detective Joey Quinn, a total hunk who looked like he could have been on Gossip Girl. He could totally get it. 
It's funny how serial killers and their families can sometimes then diagram with law enforcement. Wait, where was I? Oh yeah, Trinity means three, right? Well, it was Miami Metro Homicide and Frank Lundy who realized that this leg-slashing, mother-throwing, daddy-hammering asshole didn't just kill in threes. He killed in fours. It was tied into his most fucked-up, beyond fucked-up killing of a young boy. If there's one thing we know, it's that nobody should kill little kids. And dogs. So in this part, what we could take away is that she knows that serial killers live normal lives. They're the unsuspecting guy. Just like Dexter is the unsuspecting guy. No one would think that Dexter would do this. You see, he got donuts and everything else. He goes, everyone loves him. You see, hey, Jim, how's everything else? But that won't fool who she is. That's not going to fool her. She's not going to be, that's not going to be able to pull the wool over Molly's eyes, which is why she knows exactly what the hell is going on with Dexter and why Dexter most likely has to take her out. Remember all that mild mannered bullshit we were talking about? Arthur was also a bleeding heart. He would go on vacation once a year or so, but his vacation, building homes for the homeless. Move over Jimmy Carter. This guy really put his heart into the foundations of the homes he helped build. Well, the heart of the deceased toddler and the name of the organization that he volunteered for, wait for it, four walls, one heart. Do you follow? Sicko. Jesus H. Christ on a crutch. Our Arthur Mitchell had a dark sense of humor. I'll give him that. Once Miami Metro Homicide put this together and saw all the places Arthur Mitchell had helped build a home, yeah, it's excavate that basement to find a dead kid inside those walls. So with Special Agent Frank Lundy on his tail, Arthur Mitchell's daughter, the one born out of wedlock or some shit like that, comes to her serial killer dad's rescue and shoots Lundy and his girlfriend, policewoman Deborah Morgan. Lundy dies and the young detective with father issues, Deborah, survives, which only puts her more resolutely onto the trail of the Trinity killer. You go, girl. So here we see that she brings up Deborah Morgan. She knows the name. Deborah Morgan. So if the chief goes to her, yeah, my boyfriend Jim's name really isn't Jim. And she's like, oh, what's his name? Dexter Morgan. She's going to say, Dexter Morgan? What I hear this? Holy shit. The Dexter Morgan? whose sister Deb helped take down the Trinity killer and the chief would be like, oh, you know him? Oh, do I know him? And there you go. She will go through everything and drop all that information that she knows about that family. And she also knows that she had daddy issues. This brings us to our final kill. At least the last one that we recognize as a classic Trinity slaying. The police are finally hit to his MO. But of course, they don't get it together fast enough to stop him from one final cut. For this one, he goes rogue. Some folks think this last slaying was blood for blood. With Miami Metro Homicide hot on the trail of Christine, the Lundy killer, the daughter of the most prolific of serial killers, took her own life rather than go to jail. Finally, a real deal suicide rather than all the fake ones that her father perpetuated on so many women. There's some kind of justice, right? Think about that. It was Detective Deborah Morgan who caused this. So Trinity went after this gorgeous girl next door beauty with the picture perfect family and sister-in-law to Debbie, Rita Morgan. And this, this is the real fucked up part. She has a young baby. Arthur pulled a lady in the lake style murder on this poor woman, barged into her home, stripped her down and bathed her, slashed her thigh, watched as she bled out. And this young baby, He's in the fucking room when she dies, leaving that baby crawling in a pool of his mother's own blood. How fucked up is that kid now? Am I right? I mean, there's not enough therapy in the world to make things right in that kid's head. And kiddo, if you're out there and you want to come be a guest on Merry Fucking Kill, I'm your Huckleberry. I'd love to pick your brain. Find out which side of the tracks you ended up on, psycho or perfectly normal. Hit me up on my Insta. Here in this podcast, we see that she's aware exactly how Rita died, everything that goes on in Rita's life. She knows that Harrison was in the blood. She also knows that he would be old enough at this time to hit her up on her Instagram. Harrison said he found Dexter on Instagram. She has a whole lot of Instagram detectives. How did Harrison get the money to come all the way up there and find Dexter? Why did she go all the way to this little ass town for a case that wasn't even considered a murder at the time that didn't make national headlines. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but you be the judge. Let's finish this off right now. I call that the last kill. 
because Arthur Mitchell disappeared into the wilderness. Nobody knows where that motherfucker went. So the next time you see a suicide or an accidental death or move into a house with a basement with a strange lump at the foundation, wonder if this is the work of the misnamed Trinity Killer. Is he on some new form of kill cycle? Because fuckers like this don't just decide to end their killing careers and move on to oil painting. No, they keep on keeping on. Maybe, just maybe, that old dude who's staring at you at the local farmer's market isn't just a harmless fella dreaming of the old days. Maybe he's gonna follow you home and do who the fuck knows what to you, leaving you to bleed out in your bed. And Trinity, Arthur baby, if you're out there and you're listening along, jerking off as you're revisiting all these nauseating kills, fuck you. Sincerely, Molly Park. Join us next week as we delve back into Miami Slayers and talk about Brian Moser, the ice truck killer. Until then, stay frosty, my murder fiends. She ends this podcast saying Arthur Miller is still out there. She believes he's still out there. And then she talks about Brian Moser, the ice truck killer, who is Dexter's brother. Will she put all of that together? I am confident that she is going to put the fact that that's Dexter's brother and everything else together. I think she's going to have all this solved up. And before it can really truly happen, I think that's the reason why Dexter has to take her out. But you tell me what you think about this in podcast in the comment section. I'm telling you people, they just didn't put this one episode out there showtime just to do it. This is a clue. These are hints that they're trying to drop on you. That's why this was released. Because if it was just a publicity stunt and they wanted to show you something, they could have did one strictly on Charles Manson. Ha! I didn't say Marilyn. Ha 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 ha! Let's get to it. I told you I had two videos hit that 500 mark. So we're going to do this one for the Dexter New Blood Episode 5 Breakdown. And the winner for that one is the Positive Amputee. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for liking the video. Hit me up, Teflon TV on Facebook. Send me your information and I will send you that t-shirt. I will announce the winner for the other t-shirt in the next video. But, but I'm telling you, if this video hits 500 likes before that, I will drop both names in the next video. So let's try to get this video to 500 likes. If you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this, spread this across the realm, and as always, subscribe. Let me know how you feel about everything in the comment section. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace and stay sexy.